Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. Billy and I are taking a little bit of break from running around the state trying to hunt down toilet paper to bring you some molt updates. I've had a few of them molt the last couple weeks that I'm really excited about and just kind of want to share. So again, this won't be the most educational video. Sometimes I just like showing some pictures of my spiders and their new outfits and, and showing them to people that actually appreciate them. So again, this will be a little light on the education, but hopefully you guys will appreciate some of the beautiful spiders I'm able to show off here. So enough of me talking, let's get on to the actual video. All right, so we're gonna take a break from trying to find toilet paper and do a little update on some of the molts we've had recently, a couple of which I'm incredibly excited about. So the first one we're gonna do here is my Brachypelma boy me or bay me or i again this is the one i joke that i get so many different pronunciations she's a little bit flighty so i'm gonna be careful opening this up but there she is gorgeous girl oh those colors are really popping this is the purebred one i have another one i bought years ago named lazarus that we picked up and is probably a baby bomb gartney hybrid there are two very similar species that are actually separated, I believe, by a river. So they don't normally mingle in the wild, but unfortunately some of them got into the hobby and were basically hybridized and sold off. And it sounds like the people that did it knew full well what they were doing. So this one has been actually growing for a Brachypelma species. She has been growing incredibly fast. I got her as a sling about three and a half years ago, and she's grown much faster than some of my other Brachys, which has been great. And as you can see, the colors are just exquisite, just a beautiful spider. She's actually behaving herself quite well there. Now this one will be getting a larger enclosure. I had her in this, I think when she hit about two inches or so, we put her in this one. And there you can see. She's looking great. I'm going to pull the molt out because apparently there are a contingency of people out there that seem to think that the molts are like deadly to them and they freak out if I don't pull them out in the video. So just to keep those comments down. Actually, there's another one that looks like buried behind its water dish. Well, as you can see, they don't cause any problem. So there we go. Brachypelma boimi or baimi. I'll have to put the common name up on the screen because I honestly don't know it. I'm not particularly great with the common name, so I apologize for that. Now, this one here I was just talking about when I did my moisture dependency species video and slash I did the article video and the podcast. I believe I mentioned the podcast, but this is what should be my Afonapelma annex which I picked up as a little teeny sling. Now there's going to be people that come on and immediately say that that is a Brachypelma albiceps. I know they look very similar. And I've, this has been come up every time I post pictures or video up of this one, the albiceps thing comes up. The thing is it was sold as annex. The species do look very similar. What people notice is with the albiceps, you get the darker legs, the red booty, and then the blonde carapace. The carapace on this one will, as it gets, uh, dries up a little bit and hardens up, that will darken as it gets further and further away from the molt. And if you look up pictures of them online, the females can look a lot like albiceps. That said, what I'm gonna do is, if you notice over here, and I'm not gonna take it out right now, but there is the molt, I'm gonna take that out and try to get the spermatheca under a microscope so I can compare it to spermatheca of the annex and the albiceps, figure out exactly what it is. But again, I get it. I know there's gonna be more comments going, that's not an annex, but I've had folks that had annexes that said theirs looked exactly like this. You can't really identify them just by looking at them, so we will look at the lady parts and see what we got. But anyway, it's a gorgeous spider. This is one I talked about, that when I got as a sling, everybody said to keep them dry. I put it on dry substrate in a little dram bottle. And what happened was it just basically was cowering in the corner, not eating, not webbing, not doing much of anything for quite a while. And then finally, one day on a whim, I took a stylus to, I believe it was a DS, a Nintendo DS, and made a little hole down the side between the dirt and the side of the enclosure. I used a dropper, put a bunch of water down there so it soaked the bottom layer. The next day, I came back the next morning, it had dug all the way down that hole, dug out the entire bottom, made a nice little moist chamber for itself. And that night, it ate for the first time since I had purchased it. So that was a huge wake-up call for me that some of these species that we call arid do appreciate some moisture and that you're, you know got to make sure you give them some if they need it. And now the next one is probably the one I'm most excited about. I picked this up here. This is a Formictopus species blue. I picked up a pair of them years ago from a place that is no longer in business. And the male, it was one of those good things where they, the guy actually sold me the male is about, I think two inches and the female was like three inches. But unfortunately the male matured out very, very quickly. There is the female. Now hopefully some of these colors will show up. Oh, she's showing a little bluish. I'm going to move the light around here. Absolutely stunning spider. Now, what I'm going to do is flash a picture. i got to find a picture of what she looked like before because for three molts, she has had kind of, 
how do you even describe it? Almost a pinkish carapace, pinkish hairs on her legs. You can see there there's almost green on her femurs now, but her, fe her legs were almost pink in like almost a, a grayish blue. So I thought, all right, this is what they're gonna look like. Well, she molted a couple times and then, oh my gosh, she's stunning. Oh, there's a lot of green on her now. This is actually the first time we've seen her after she's been hardening up. Dear Lord. I'm, I'm actually looking through the viewfinder right now with Billy, so I'm seeing the same thing you guys are for the first time, and I've never seen all the colors like this. Um, anyway, we thought she was probably an old female because she didn't bolt for over three years, and she was fat, she wasn't eating. I kept the water dish full, I'd moisten up the substrate every once in a while. Well, the other day I came in and was shocked to find not only has she molted, but her whole appearance has changed drastically. This is a stunning spider. She was one of my favorites in my collection anyway because I haven't talked to a lot of people that have this species around here or in the United States. And when I've asked people to show me pictures of theirs, I've gotten several different types of spiders. I'm not sure what species she really is, but as you can see there, that is a good looking spider. My God, I'm like speechless. That thing looks absolutely amazing. Blue Beautiful. on the legs, green on the, th still got some of the pink showing up. Yep. Just absolutely stunning spider. So incredible. This is, this was one of probably the most exciting bolts I've ever received because it was to the point where I was really concerned that she was just an old female that wasn't going to molt again or, you know, would molt several years off or whatever. Or maybe she was at the end of her life cycle. I don't know. I didn't think so because she wasn't full grown when I got her but she was taking quite a long time to molt and I was getting worried and when she molted it was well worth it. So there we go for Mictopus Species Blue. And what we will do in a moment is we're gonna clear the table off in a second and I'm gonna bring out the last one for this one which is a spider that people have followed me for a while and have probably been wondering about. So let's just take a quick break and we'll get that one out here. All right, and finally next up we have my Lazyodora Itabune. Pick this one up as a juvenile, it was about three inches or so, several years, probably seven years back from Ken the Bug Guy. And at the time, this is when I didn't buy a lot of juveniles because I just assumed like that there's a rumor out there that if you're buying a juvenile that the people have sexed it and they're giving you a male. That's not necessarily true. A lot of times if they're selling stuff that hasn't been sexed, or it's larger, they haven't had time to sex it, they haven't looked at the molts, they're just selling it as is. And this proves it because this one ended up being a beautiful female, and this is one of the ones a lot of people looked at and said it was gonna be a male. Nope, it's a lady. This is a species I haven't seen around all that often, but it is a stunning one. You can see there it has the reddish type hairs on the abdomen and around it, and just a beautiful spider. Now this one now, I'm gonna get the molt out in a moment, but this one's now probably pushing about seven and a half -ish inches or so. So it's a really big girl. This is one of my son's favorite because years ago he had to do a report on species from Brazil and he chose this one to do the report on and it actually just molted so he got some good molting photos and whatnot. So it was really kind of a cool report and the kids are pretty excited about the fact that we had tarantulas in the house. So really excited to see this girl still doing well and hopefully she'll continue to grow. Maybe we'll hit that fabled eight inch mark at some point. But there we go, Lazyodora itabune. All right, so excited about all of these, but if I have to pick one that I'm most excited about, it's gonna be that species blue, that Formictibus species blue that I've had for quite some time. Again, I was starting to worry about her. She wasn't that old and usually they live longer, but she had gone so long without a molt and had taken off from eating for a while. And if you know Formictibus, they pretty much eat right until the point they molt. So I was getting concerned. So to find her sitting there that day with the molt next to her with that beautiful new uh, exoskeleton, I mean, it was just one of the coolest moments in the hobby for me honestly just so excited about it and again that's a species that since I got it I've been asking around and not too many people seem to have them and to be honest when I see pictures of other people's species blues they tend to look a little bit different from this one so I don't know if there's different species being sold as species blue knowing what a mess the Formictibus genus is that's probably the case but anyway regardless of what she is she is an absolutely stunning spider and I'm so glad to have her in my Formictibus collection. All right, so that'll do it for this one. As always, I have a website you can check out. If you like listening to middle-aged men gush about tarantulas for 45 minutes to an hour, you might like to check out my podcast. I've, some people really seem to appreciate it. As always, if you comment, I will respond. It might take me a couple days to get the comments, but I respond to every single one of them. If you enjoyed the video enough that you'd like to subscribe, very much appreciate You can click the circle right up there. If you want to check out a couple more videos in the meantime, they will be over there. As always, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you guys all next time.